Hey guys, it's Parker here with an episode of The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Um, yeah, I'm actually very to continue Great Ace Attorney. Okay. Alright, let, let's go. Standing here in the bright sunshine. Standing here in the bright sunshine. The vast ocean. Oh, okay. Pfft. Those days in London seem like a dream. But I do miss my time in England's vast capital. You know, he's flourished into a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment he's fighting some noble cause in court. Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Just two months after arriving home. So I came here today to ask something of you. Tomorrow, I shall be standing in court. For the only time in my life. As a lawyer. So please, I ask for your guidance. Kazuma-sama. My god. <laughs> Episode 1! Okay, the adventure of Blossoming Attorney. Oh, wow. Just on the, the first two minutes. Here I am again after nine months, the Supreme Court of Judication of Japan. I feel so nervous, but I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Oh, good, you're here. Oh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you, kind of fine, bigger console. But you look as white as a sheet, and those white eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Oh, dear. The truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous, I feel utterly nauseated. I almost wish I had never been born. Goodness, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter, I must say. Eugen Migotoba. Professor of Medicine at Imperial Yumei University. A man who, earlier in his life, traveled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medical science. And of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me. Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer in court today? Um, oh, um, yes, yes, that's right. Miss? Well, I, um... I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear, I swear on my life. It's a complete fabrication, this whole thing. I have no idea how to voice anyone <laughs> so far. Ray Membami. Membami. Oh, born the same year as I, my greatest friend. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at the university research laboratory helping my father. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial, accused of committing a truly awful murder. Are you feeling alright? Since you started talking, you seem, well, to have become a little flushed. Oh my, um, well, um, it's just that... You look so gallant and dashing! <laughs> Sorry? And when I fall under your intense gaze, it, well, it makes me feel rather bashful. Goodness, I don't think she knows. She hasn't realized who I am. <laughs> It'll seem our little platform's child is going to work. Oh, what? What do you mean, Professor Mikotoba? 
If even your best friend can't see their disguise, the Quaker rocks. Disguise? Yeah, I yes, I've never tried dressing this way before, of course, so I wasn't sure how convincing it would be. But this does make me feel a little really dicey say fodder. But fodder? What? Is that is that you, Susato? I'm so sorry to say uh, no, what are you doing? What's going on? What 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 what? That varsity uniform, that varsity cap, the varsity cape, the varsity badge! Look at you! You look for all the world just like a student at the Imperial Humane University, a male student! I'm so glad you think so. It means all my preparations have been worthwhile. I woke up at 4 this morning to make a start. But, but I underst understand why I dress like that because women can't be liars in this era, Ray. Well, you see, it was the only way. The only way she will be permitted to spring court to take on your defense is trial. My my defense? Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated having been born into this body. Courts in Japan are barred to women. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom. Despite the fact that the laws of the land of all people, male and female alike. But women are forbidden. Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door so that I could act as your lawyer. Oh, Susato, you, you go to such lengths for me? I mean, you guys are best friends, right? Of course, you're my greatest friend. I just worry that I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. Oh no, I have complete faith in you. Ray. It's so strange though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. And yet just because you're a woman, what a wretched reason. I mean, why would it shouldn't you be allowed in court? You're so gallant and dashing. Um, Ray, please don't look at me like that with those flushed cheeks and doting eyes. Ah, I mean, I think she likes the look that you're going for, Susano. Oh, um, I'm sorry, it's just you really do look so dashing. Oh, it's <laughs> so fruity. Yeah, yes, you mentioned that once or twice. Wah ha ha ha, you should be pleased. It means you look convincing as a man. I am pleased, I think. It certainly helped to bolster my confidence today. Ray, you're imagining to put on a brave face in all this, but I can see through it. I've noticed how your shoulders are slumped and how you're trembling ever so slightly. Susato, you do believe me, don't you? I didn't do it. I, I couldn't have. I mean, murder? Of course. You have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clean. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Perfectly clean. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you to the bitter end in this trial. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. That means so much to me, Susano. Defend a console! Court is about to get proceeded to cover once. You should go on at once, right? If you're late, um, I feel like the security guard's voices are similar to mine. If you're late, the judge won't have to pronounce you guilty. Oh. Stand aside! I don't think I've ever seen her run so fast. Well, Susato, you certainly surprised your father. Going to such lengths to be a dead minute into the courtroom. I have no prior experience of being a liar. I mean, she was a ju judicial assistant, so she's got some experience in the courtroom. There's simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father... You haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming that Ray doesn't know how it came to this. Yes, quite right. I kept that information from her. It would only worry if she found out that no other lawyer would agree to take her case. I didn't want to burden her with that. And is it true, the reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case? Is it really because of who the victim was? We should be making a move now too. As you know, law is in my field, but I do what I can to support my student. Thank you, father. I'm Susato Mikotoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. 
how many times have I wished that hero here, I wonder. Still, I have no choice now but to steal myself for the child ahead. Wish me luck, Marhoda said. This court is now in search of the for trial, right, man? Bomb me! The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. <laughs> Sorry, you look great! Defense console, you're ready? Oh god, I have no idea how to do any of the voices so far because it's just the first episode. <laughs> yes, Your Excellency, we are ready. Ready! Ah, oh, oh yes, Consul. According to your registration details, your name is, um, Ryutaro Naro. <laughs> so correct. Ryutaro. Sorry? Oh, yes. I have to come up with a suitable male name for you for this little venture. So I'm afraid to say simply put down the first thing that sprung to mind. Well, Consul? Ah, uh, um, yes, that's right. That's me. I'm, um, I mean... Yes, I'm Yurtaro, he who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Naruhoto clan. Ah. <laughs> it seems Yurtaro may need to consider how better to uphold this manly act first and not overdo it. And those wild, wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Naruhoto? French face the curves, and I'm mistaken. But the name Naruhoto, would that perchance be. You may be thinking of Nuriyosuke Naruhoto, currently in Britain as part of a study program. This is, um, his cousin! That's right, Yutaro here is in studying in the provinces. But was called the capital for his trial. I assure you, in the matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of any of Tokyo's preeminent lawyers. Any of them! What a pitiful situation! Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accusers has had to call him a country boy. How dare you! Susato has ever been as gallant and dashing as any of our Tokyo attorneys! I won't have you making fun of her! Oh no, her? Oh, um, er... Please be careful, Ray. Tshaw, what an unrefined tomboy you have here! But I wonder, is your gallant and dashing liar up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he's not. Ugh, I'm so nervous. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand what Naruhoto san goes through. Like it or not, eyes are wont to flit. <laughs> the case to be heard on those days about her great significance in her national interest. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may well affect the very future of our employer. I have no idea what I'm doing. Just like the child nine months ago. And yet for proceeding in such importance, you have this unknown Yoko by the dog. Dear me. Hmm. Perhaps this would be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense. To determine whether you are sufficiently competent, competent to practice in this courtroom. Nine months ago, when a certain other Naruhoto stood where you're standing now. Yes, we know. The same judge tested him as well. And even though he was just a student at the time, and even a law, he passed the test of flying colors. For a trained and experienced judicial system like you, this will be easy. So, Consul, do you go consent to answer such simple questions? Alright, it's time to prove myself. Yes, Your Excellency, but please do make them simple. Very well, to start with... Uh... Oh, whoops. You'll state the name of the victim. Do we have any court records? Phew, that's simple. I couldn't forget that if I tried. Ah. What's the matter? Now that I'm standing shoes, I'm starting to understand something else that all the sand goes through. Like it or not, my are won't to blank. It's not surprising really, it's the first time in this position and in that guy's. Even a bright spark like you is bound to flicker and falter a little under the circumstances. Oh dear, this is dismal play of failure. Don't fret, you need only the knowledge you gain as a judicial assistant to overcome the problem. 
Of course, the court record. Yep, let's look at the court record. Okay. Alright, tutorial. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. Okay, let's look- let's, let's actually look at the evidence. Pulse murder report. Time of dust just after 2 p.m. Death is believed to be trauma to the victim's lung from a knife blade. Only a single wound was identified. Victim, Giselle Brett. Okay. Single deep stab wound from behind, piercing along and resulting in fatal hemorrhage. Death would have occurred within minutes. Extreme myosis, pupil constriction, was observed in the victim in both eyes. Huh, why was her why was her eyes constricted? Okay, uh Damn, she's like 25. Alright. What is the name of the victim in this case? Giselle Brett. The name of the victim who lost her life in this case is Miss Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. A name that will never be forgotten in the course of our country, I'm sure. Correct. And being a member of our empowered judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. So, let me pose another simple question. As you know, Miss Brett was a visiting student for the Empire of Great Britain. Why, then, is her name indelibly associated with her own empire's judicial history? That was the start of everything. Giselle Brett, behind a woman's student persona, was the face of a killer. Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed. And the culprit was Giselle Brett. And she got away with it. Yes, she was a killer. Um, yeah, I feel like we have already seen this at the previous game, but they're just like uh, re-illiterating everything that just happened. I guess there was like a time gap between... Great, great Ace Attorney 1 and Grace Ace Attorney 2. So I guess it's just like refreshing all the players' memories at this point. I'll just kind of like uh, skim through it because um, I'm pretty sure we all know what happened during that time. It was sad that she removed to Shanghai, China instead. Oh, why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Oh, correct. I ever saw the negotiations personally. Okay, so she went to Shanghai. But why was she back here again? Like, only to get murdered. And yet, the very day before her departure, the English woman was killed? Only the day before? So she freaking died? Damn! Like, she didn't even leave the country. Thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Okay, now summary does it if you please. The pregnant crime took place on the 11th of August in broad daylight. Oh, look at the seagulls! On the outskirts of the Imperial Capital, under bright blue sky at a secluded bathing spot by the sea. The incident occurred inside a small beach hut erected for bathers to rest or change their clothes. Why is she like gripping a pen? The cause of the death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. 
and injury which proved fatal. Damn, even a swan is like passed out. There were two persons alone together in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death. Miss Brett in her bathing attire and the accused Raymond Bami. That was her bathing attire? I thought that was his dress. Accordingly, there could be no doubt the accused's guilt, especially when considering she had a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and promptly arrested the young lady. What would even be her motive? <laughs> Well, a story description of events is someone lost their words, I must say. That's certainly true. The prosecution summary was full of words that raised an awful lot of questions. As a lawyer, really out to pick up the prosecution counsel, what he said about uh, a powerful motive? What motive would she even have? You're clearly exaggerating. Powerful motive is a blatant overstatement. It's like Yoko Boy using long words he doesn't fully understand. Oh, you have no idea how much extraordinary vocabulary Susano has in her brain. Ouchie. I beg your pardon? No matter. Let us put this to the accused, shall we? Membami san, you are a research assistant at the Perry Humane University, I believe. Yes, I am. I'm working with Professor Mugatoba in his laboratory at the moment. I can go for that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikotoba, who's the researcher you're assisting them? Oh, um, well, um, I was studying under Dr. John H. Wilson. Dr. Dr. Wilson? The visiting English professor was murdered by Miss Brett nine months ago? The accused had a deep-seated respect for a former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is it not true? Yes, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Now tell the court what deep-seated feelings he had towards the English woman who killed him. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what she had done. A powerful hatred. Oh no, Ray, be careful what you're saying. Ah. The motive was to French. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. Hmm. Well, it was clear a trap all along. How wicked of him to use Ray's undying respect for a former mentor against her like that. I was finding more details, accepting to use the bolster of defense. As a lawyer, really out to pick up the prosecution counsel, what he said about the baiting spot? Why was she at the baiting spot? Wasn't she um scheduled to departure for Shanghai, China? What do you want, you fresh-faced young yoko student? Damn. I wonder, could you explain please? You mentioned a bathing spot. Clearly my modernity has confused the poor country bumpkin's simple mind. Bathing spots are the very latest trend in health practices for the West. We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. No, that's not what I meant. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had, to all intents and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal have been relaxing by the sea? For all time's sake, I believe. Sorry? Miss Brett was to depart for Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at our country's wonderful coast, but she's a freaking criminal. Why would you even, like, bring that upon her? Why would you even listen to her final wish? It's not like she was on death row. <sighs> and the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. But, but what grounds would we agree to such a request? Because, as usual, our government is unable to stand up to foreign powers. In matters of diplomacy, it's easy you don't even have the courage to decline the whims of a known criminal. The don't look at me a professor is government granted permission, not I. In any case, it's decided that with a dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. There was a detective on the on the scene? It's a young student girl who did it, not I. No one has proved that yet. I wanna provoke the man if we don't need to. Hmm, at this stage any gather more information. Okay, uh, being alone together? Why were they even alone <laughs> together? Um, and Bami san Yes, what is this? This is, uh, I, I mean, uh, Naruhoto-san. 
I'm really starting to wish we had met allies through a Taurus Sasato. Please tell the court why exactly you're present at the baiting spot with the victim in the first place. And why you're alone with her. Oh, well, no, that's not true. It wasn't like that at all. There were other people present. A detective was guarding Miss Brett for starters. I was just asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion, that's all. Why? But let us be clear, at the moment of death, you're allowed to get a victim and hunt you and no one else. The truth is, there's only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brett and her baiting sojourn. It was accused last chance to take the victim's life. No. Because as we know, the following day we see Miss Brett extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. And accused of never having an opportunity to dispatch her again. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. <laughs> okay. Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Brett managed to avoid incarceration. Instead, continuing research work at their university. Obviously, over that period, she and Ray would have encountered each other on a number of occasions. Seeing the murder of the mentor for whom she has such great respect, enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes, even if it was only temporary until Miss Brett's extradition to Shanghai. You can hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger or resentment. Poor Ray. Sorry, Excellency. Oh, new evidence. Photographic print of the crime. Oh, God. Yes, thank you, Counsel. A tragic image. Oh, goodness. As you can clearly see, there's no more within the hut that anyone else would have hidden. The court will accept this photographic print as evidence. Oh goodness. Okay, let's look at the photograph. Oh boy. Um Okay, there's like a wine bottle. Why is the cup like tipped over? Why is she carrying the pen? It's so tightly gripped. Oh no, the swan. The swan didn't do anything. I feel sad for the swan. <laughs> okay. It's deeply troubling, I must say. The finger of guilt points firmly at the defendant. To that end, I could currently have multiple witnesses to the crime. Okay. So we could have a witness testimony. Here at this very courthouse. When that air very loose to the boy order humiliated me. Is that why you let your hair grow out? <laughs> yeah, he has a grudge against Naruhoto, and the Susano has like the last name Naruhoto, so Oh yeah, he cut his hair, I forgot. Oh my god. Stark the head of a summer whose top knot has been cut and the bell culture alignment tolls. Yes, and on the fateful day, my former self died. The start of your own mini Meiji revolution. Are you modernizing as well, Consul? Silence! Since I saw revenge back then, there's been a minor miracle on top of my head. Observe! The oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he's freaking bald! <gasps> see, the scene of hope sprouting forces this barren expanse of my crown. I, I think that Tiny Gross is trying to tell me something. That he's bald. I'm afraid I can't really see. Where, where is the hope exactly? I said silence today. Face another Yokosin of the Naruto clan. I, well, I will vanquish you. I may think there will be fertilizer for the seed of hope on top of my head. You have been warned. With that, the prosecution calls the witnesses in stand. Oh, looks like the stakes are high on both ends sides of this trial. <laughs> the prosecution demons <laughs> see just much to lose. 
A haircut is hardly comparable to Ray's hot. Oh my god, it's so oh, it's dumb. Oh my god. Witnesses, this we state your days at Okusha sort of court. Chief Inspector Satoru Hosanaga. Oh, I don't have a turtle on my head. Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can go undetected. And I am, well, next big thing in books. An author renowned throughout the capital, in fact. Yes. Soon to be sold out. The satirical. I am a cat. A sensational success by Soseki Nasume. Who is that person at the back? Oh my goodness. Circus student for the provinces, please. You need to be an all me. I ain't need it. It's only natural to feel nervous in my presence, but all of you, please relax. Call me Soseki, even. <laughs> Soseki. Um, yes. What on earth is Soseki not doing here? Tread carefully, Suzato. The author fellow knows you from your time in London, doesn't he? If he exposes you for who you really are, this will be over before it's begun. Yes, yes, of course, I know. I presume Soseki san won't have forgot about me. I will certainly never forget him. Although he does seem to have changed some in the six months or so that has been since I last saw him. And as for Inspector Hosonaga, that amazing outfit is hard to believe. Do I have to in my face? I mean, you have a turtle. Well, your glasses for one, although they don't seem to be helping you, see? Thank goodness he hasn't recognized me either. Ah, I suppose this is disguise, is it? I thought that appearing here in the clothes I was wearing at the time would make for a more faithful testimony. It was my guiding principle to carry out all testimonies flawlessly. Hmm, well, I can appreciate why an Imperial Police Bureau detective might have been present. But what business did a writer such as yourself have being at the scene of Soseki's hand? Ah, oh, well, you see, I have been asked that day to give a lecture on the morning incident at Imperial Humane University's Grand Lecture Hall, no less. Ah, uh, at Humane University? At the lecture, I had a very pleasant conversation with a researcher from the medical science department. The professor over there, in fact. With my fa- What? Uh, what? Professor Makotoba? Okay? Do you want us a story or other about two former students who studied in Great Britain? They secretly spy, staff shop, scribble stories, and suffer my privacy like the dude in the back! <sighs> As you can see, the conversation center of this new newspaper here. Read it at your leisure, my provincial. Starting student friend, I have plenty of copies. Thank you very much. You practically threw that paper at me. Alright. New evidence. Let's look at the evidence here. <laughs> oh, the cat! Ah, I think it's Waga High's um, kitten. Oh my god. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, anyway, yeah. The debate became quite spirited. The lady question appeared and made a very unexpected announcement. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. Those are her words. As I explained before, Miss Spry was never taken into custody. She continued to work in my laboratory, under strict surveillance, of course. At which utterance, the university immediately contacted the government to seek guidance. Wow, like, freaking Giselle Brett has so much nerve. Like, she freaking murdered a professor at the same university and she continued to work there at the laboratory? Wow. <sighs> That's a lot. That's a lot of nerve. <laughs> wow. That detective, I am liberty to divulge with my cute turtle was me, Chief Inspector Satoru Hosanaga. Okay, thereby the entire party departed quarterly for seaside, it seems. It was extremely challenging to carry all other members of the public from the vicinity of the beach. <coughs> but unfortunately, I'm at peak physical fitness at the moment, so I was able to carry out my duty flawlessly. Oh my inspector you well you do have the near face now. Ah, how I'm sorry, I do apologize. I keep coughing up blood, but you know, I I'm still a detective working. Does that mean you went to the beach too, father? 
No, no, fortunately I had work to finish off. But not unfortunately, of course. I met that as my assistant, Ray was invited to take my place. I didn't like to decline the invitation. Ah, but all the Invidonia had, I never have seen that awful sight! Relentlessly, racked by remorse and regret! Okay, present your former testimony to the court. You give an account of all that you witnessed and you're prompt to search into the coast. Of course, Your Excellency. Relentlessly, racked by remorse and regret, I am. On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this disguise. I just managed to grab catch a crab and I suddenly heard a cotter wall from behind me. I ran out to beach hut at once where I found the pair in question. Yes, yes, yes! The young girl was to start the English when Darren had and she stabbed wildly! There was only one stab wound though, why would she stab wildly? I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me that she stabbed the victim multiple times. No, there was only one stab wound. Hosonaga? Hosonaga? Indeed, the spirit of testimony of both witnesses here presents solid. The very moment of this heinous crime. What? Now, if you recall, I promised evidence as well. What praise did I use again? I ah, yourself was a damning evidence. Hmm, what have you there, Council? The so called fount pen, is it? Correct, Your Excellency. I found out the scene whilst examining the body. It appears that in her dying moments, with her final ounce of strength, the victim clutched a piece of evidence that would positively identify her killer. What? Your Excellency, if you press that, cast your eyes over the photograph print of the crime scene. Yeah, she was seen gripping the pen. But, like, did she write on the ground or something? And if you kindly examine the pen, Your Excellency. Ah! The owner's initials have been engraved into the Imbonite barrel. RM. <laughs> RM! <laughs> Namjoon! <laughs> Ray Membami. The initials of the defendant! Uh, no! What if it's someone else? Okay. Alright. I want to look at the court record. Okay, let's see. Uh, with the initials RM. I mean, is there anyone else with the uh, initials RM? I guess not. Decisive testimony, damning evidence. There's a bright blue sky outside the corridors today. Perfect weather to describe guilt, I feel. I don't understand. The prosecutor Algy prosecutor nine months ago had none of this man's poise. Counsel for the deepest, we begin our cross examination now. Okay, I am gonna shove that freaking uh, uh, autopsy report on Hosonaga's testimony. You could do this, Susato. That means, oh, yes, me. Is there any other Naruto in my courtroom? Actually, there is even a single Naruhoda in your car room. Cousin Ryotaro, pull yourself together, please. Alright, I've seen this countless times as a judicial assistant. Find inconsistencies in the witnesses' testimonies to prove that they're lying somehow. That's all there is to it. That's how a real lawyer would handle a cross-examination. So let's see what I can do. You can do it, Suzato. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna present the autopsy report. Attention. With that accusatory cry that just swallowed up from deep inside me, I think I finally understand. Every time Kazuma summoned, Naruhoto Sana stood up, uh, stood here at the bench. The stakes have been very, very high indeed. What? What's the meaning of the menacing pose, Council? I'd like the witness to clarify something for me. 
Who? What? Where? When? How? But no one says why? Not you, Soseki-san. This car is directed at Inspector Hosonaga. At me? In your statement just now, you said that the victim was stabbed multiple times. Yo! Listen, listen to the steam though! Pretty banger. Yes, that's right. As I said when I entered the hut, the defendant was already standing over the victim, buddy knife in hand like a murderous demon. And yet, that cannot be. What? Get to the point, please, Consul. In the postmortem report, it clearly states that the victim was stabbed one time only. <coughs> In other words, Inspector Hosonaga's testimony. It's clearly flawed. Ah, and Soseki san. M me? You claim to have seen Mabami san in the throes of stabbing the victim. Ye yes, yes, it did wildly! But both you and the inspector confirmed the same point that there was already blood on the knife that you saw the defendant holding. Yes, and. It's quite simple. We know the murder weapon was used to stab the victim only once, therefore, there is no way there could have been blood on the knife if the single stabbing hadn't already occurred. Arg, true! Then what exactly is the contention, Kazo? Are you ever going to tell us? Yes, Your Excellency, there is only one logical conclusion. What Suseki san in fact saw was not the moment that the defendant stabbed the victim at all, but the moment that the defendant, in fact, withdrew the blade from the victim's body. The, the cat be Excellent work, Susano. You exploded them with that objection uh, and then proceeded to pull them apart systematically. Yeah, Susano's just really smart. To show her. Well, well, this takes me back. Yes, I see you remember because they just seen much like this in the child nine months ago. A half with the child will have baked object and intending to seal the show. You're right. There, di da, whoops, <laughs> di da do. There were certain similarities, except the so-called half-witted child match should all outwit the prosecution, who has only half a head of hair. <laughs> Slider, my head is quite adequately dressed. Um, no. In any case, I'm just talking of stabbing with drawing of multiple wounds. It makes not a jot of difference. What? Why not? Engage your brain, young man. When the accused first punched a deadly weapon into the victim, that was a fatal blow. And it was at the moment just as she had withdrawn the blade ready for her next strike that the witnesses saw. The knife was already tainted with blood because the accused had already stabbed the victim. Ah. Uh, all you have to be shown with your little display is that the mustache alter is prone to moments of extravagance. Ah. I am in agreement with the prosecution. If the defendant had was seen wielding the blade at all, that is sufficient grounds for her actions to be viewed with suspicion. But but if she was withdrawing the blade, then we are back where we started. Sorry? Okay, I was just checking if everything was alright. Consider this young Yoko boy. If the cynic girl is as innocent as you claim, then why would she have pulled the blade for the victim? I would have deemed it's cold blood a composer too. The prosecution demands an explanation, and it better be good. Why did Ray pull out the knife? Ah yes, going for the juggler. Hmm? What what does Swatter mean by that? Let the court here answer that counsel. The truth is I don't really know, but I have to come up with a possible reason here, or we don't have a case. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife blade out of the victim's body was surely so she could save her life? To stop the freaking bleeding? According to the postmortem report, the victim's death was not instant. That's correct. It's thought she would have remained conscious for a short while after sustaining the injury. <laughs> Indeed, giving her time to take hold of a piece of evidence that clearly indicates her killer. The, 
The point is, being a medical research assistant, Nanbami said was compelled to act and face with the moon and victim. Instinctively, she pulled the blade out in an attempt to save Miss Brett's life. Tish Ha Ha, did you hear that, Your Excellency? It would seem as best to inspect this young Yoko. Hmm, indeed. Uh, is it just me or does the sun feel much colder in here? Your Excellency, if I may. Speak with this. I expect this slipshot of searching just put forward by the Yoko defense console, I mean. S slipshot? Tish Ha Ha, excellent idea, Inspector. <sighs> What, what was so bad about saying that she's trying to save her life? But it matters of medicine. He appears to possess not one iota of common sense. Very well, Inspector. I'll permit your request. You will testify again before the court on the such of the defense counsel's assertion. Yes, sir. I'll do so flawlessly with the turtle on my head. <laughs> what is the turtle's story? <laughs> Pulling a blade from a wound without thinking could cause heavy, heavy, whoops, heavy bleeding. I cannot read today. That's basic knowledge that any medical research assistant with an ounce of sense would know. In other words, there's no good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull the knife from the victim. Let's not forget that the young student did have a motive for killing the victim. The man the victim murdered nine months ago, Dr. Wilson, was the defendant's highly respected mentor. Could pulling a knife from a really cause the wound to bleed heavily? Well, yeah, because the knife is blocking the blood flow, so pulling that, pulling the knife out would cause the wound to bleed more. Yes, think of the weapon itself as a stopper in a wound that prevents excessive blood loss. Yeah, exactly what I said. Until a doctor is ready to provide proper treatment, that stopper shouldn't be removed. Oh, I, I see, but what if she was trying to treat the wound? Even a quack for some obscure mountain village has such basic knowledge. Anyone's ever given some a little poke in it, I've been put it out again, knows it. Oh well, I never stabbed it in one, you see, or put a blade out of wounds, so. Of course you have it. I didn't bring you out to behave like a bandit. Father, is it true what they're telling me? Yes, it's basic remedial remed knowledge for medics. Ray would have been very well aware of it. If she were to claim ignores and such fundamentals, that would prove fatal in many ways. But then, why would Ray have done it? Could she have put out the knife in full knowledge that it would be fatal for Miss Brett? I don't know. Ray never once mentioned anything about the knife to me. It seems almost impossible to believe, but could my friend actually have- No! Trust your friend! Trust your best friend! Y yes Pull yourself together. We mustn't lose sight of why we're here. Ah. Consul's hyper cross domination. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. However, I will swear to you that if your cross domination fails to identify any issues with the established facts, I'll be moving to my education immediately afterwards. I understand. Believe in your clients are fighting for the cause until the bitter end. I knew it would be hard, but. I had no idea it would be this hard. Hold it! Oh dear, I have a lot to learn about women. On a small man, I'm just bigger than booze. Oh my god. Oh dear. Uh, perhaps a little male persona take a hold a little too much. Well, have I managed to convey the basics now? Does she cover the medical side of the argument? Huh. Okay, I think I'll just read over um, the pressing statements. Hold it! 
Hold it! Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not sure that you should be labeling your best friend as lacking in common sense. Well, I thought it would be better than labeling her as a murderer. I don't know, young people today. That's pressure, but I don't understand it. Careful, console lack of common sense could be a very dangerous thing. I just pressed this statement. Oh dear, that recorded on me rather badly. Susano, just please act like yourself. Don't let the male persona take hold. No, Susano, no, Susano, don't lose your self confidence. You can do this. Oh boy, I'm just pressing all the statements. Uh, hold it. Just hopefully it, it comes up with something. Well, yes, that's true. Dr. Wilson recognized my Bobby Stone's talent and offered her a position assistant despite her being a woman. She was extremely grateful to him. Dr. Wilson had no time for outdated traditions. He met with opposition, of course, but he firmly but he believed firmly in Mbami San's abilities. Clearly the defendant was in the man's step, which only serves to prove my point. This is hopeless. I can't find a single crack in this testimony anywhere. If Ray knew that withdrawing the knife from the wound would threaten Miss Brett's life further, I just can't think of any way to explain why she did it. Susato, it's a time is like this and especially important to remember the fundamentals. The fundamentals? Evidence is what counts it. Okay, so what? Why can't I examine this pen? Because <laughs> it's not letting me um examine it. I think perhaps we're forgetting something though. You need to take the evidence to face value. You can't it must Yeah, can can we examine the freaking pen, please? I know what to do, I just want to examine the pen. Alright. Alright, alright. Let us examine it. Okay, now I could examine the pen. Okay, uh, I'm, uh, oh, what is this? What is this design over here? There's some sort of emblem here, look, like fire emblem? But it isn't a Yume University one. It must belong to some other organization, I suppose a business of some kind. But that was to imply that the pen doesn't in fact belong to Ray. It doesn't even belong to Ray! Hmm. If we take out the pen's lid. Okay. I would like to examine this. Nothing appears out of the ordinary, does it? Hmm. What about this? Now let's unscrew the barrel, shall we? Huh, there is no ink on it. This must be a little reservoir that holds the ink. Yes, you fill it by drawing ink from a bottle up through the nib. Is something wrong, Potter? Just that there doesn't appear to be any ink in there, that's all. Oh yes, that's, you're right. It's pretty much empty. Well, it could be on the verge of running out, I suppose. Hmm... So that's pretty suspicious. How about <laughs> examine the RM initial? And the fact that Miss Burrow's clean is pen in a diamond is very clear a message too. To identify a killer me? I don't think there could be any doubt this key a piece of evidence to kiss in this case. Okay, I feel like I should examine more. Okay, wow, they didn't even let me examine the freaking newspaper. Okay, let's examine the newspaper. 
Raoka's anger returns to all. It's the interview with you and Suzuki san is it, father? The cat! Looks as though it's quite a strange. Yes, he became a little over at me when he was talking about his time in England. The Pokemon government managed to capture a moment his hand karate chopped me on the neck. I do hope you weren't hurt. Okay, why don't we look at this? This is a newspaper from Soseki san. There seems to be an important article on the back page as well. Exclusive! Deadly poison stone for Yume Medical Research Laboratory. When Yume's medical research father is not your lab? What the? Let me see it out. The, the poison's been stolen? It's this morning paper that Soseki san gave us. Are you saying you didn't know? As embarrassing as that is for the head of the laboratory, I didn't. I've not heard of any such thing. Where on earth could the reporter glean this information? Come to think of it, there was no more article matching this story in our paper this morning, was there? It's the highly toxic poison we're working on, the strictest confidence. I put Ray in charge of the pro project. Ray, she was managing it? If what's written here is true, it means that she tried to hide the death from me. And moreover, the details were leaked somehow. I, I don't believe it. We need to read this article very carefully. What? Okay, so maybe... Maybe... Okay, it was stolen. Even the smallest amount entering the body, either via the mouse or via over a poison lace blade, would prove fatal in minutes. Current methods cannot detect the newly developed chemical. The university will have to be consulted. Also, the symptoms it occurs in minutes, starting with impaired breathing and ending with acute contraction of the pupils. Okay, but like on the autopsy report, Giselle had her pupils dilated. Such systems, symptoms would, would be suggested as this toxin. It's apparently an entirely new synthesis of alkaloids and rumored to have been commissioned by the military. Oh boy. Okay, so what if the poison was in the freaking pen? Objection! No, there's one possibility. One very good reason why the defendant might have decided to withdraw the knife from the victim's wound to put the poison out for the body! It's here, in this newspaper article. An article about a deadly poison having been stolen from the laboratory at the Imperial Humane Unit. Poison is the relevance in this case! No, the victim had dilated pupils, so that's evidence of her, like, her body taking in the poison. Council for the defense. I'm going to need some tangible basis for your claim. You want to get to court precisely what part of the newspaper article mentioned affirms your assertion. Yes, of course. Thank you. Ray would never have done something to further endanger Miss Brett's life without just cause. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife from the victim's body is explained in an article where it says... Okay, I think it's deadly in tiny quantities, but I would like to... Um... Double check. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Deadly in tiny quantities. The article reveals the following property about the poison in question. When the toxin enters the body on a knife laced with the poison, it's rapidly absorbed and causes deaths in minutes. Are, are you suggesting? If the knife used to attack Ms. Rose laces this very poison, it would explain why the defendant Manbami san would have withdrawn the blade as soon as possible. Yes, the truth is. It was intent to stop the poison from entering the victim's body. What? Objection! This is complete utter nonsense! Not at all. The defendant withdrew the knife blade from the victim's body not to accelerate the woman's demise, but to save her life, and the prosecution cannot deny the possibility. Have you not read the postmortem report? The cause of death is hemorrhage. The word poison appears nowhere in the document. Giselle's eyes, pupils, her freaking not pupils are dilated. That is not what happens when you get stabbed. That's what happens when you're poisoned. 
That's because they're acting quickly to the blade. The defendant prevented the poison from taking hold. Oh, please, clear your desperation. The weasel's last breaking wind. Poison is nothing whatsoever to do this case. I simply believe the defense is well aware. We have no proof that the information is wretched newspaper articles are not at all reliable anyway. In that situation, what the student should have done is wait for medical assistance to arrive. But instead, he claims she suspected poisoning and took the potentially lethal decision to remove the blade. She must have had a strong reason for her suspicions then, or the argument makes no sense. Why did Ray suspect the stolen poison was involved? If you want grounds, I'll give you grounds. What? You you can't possibly... From your session console, it appears that those are not empty words. But naturally, as stand in this room as a lawyer, you must be aware that words alone, empty or not, are of no value in our modern justice system. The court demands evidence. Yes, Your Excellency, I'm well aware of that. I've seen it many times, from my place at his side in the Old Bailey. In that case, Council, you will present the proof to the court now. What evidence demonstrates a clear link between this case and the poison in the newspaper article? Oh, wait! I could have just presented the freaking postmortem! Because I was just talking about the dilated poop pupils. Oh, God. <laughs> My brain is not working right now. Hey, this is the freaking first case! I'm still warming up and presenting evidence. Okay. This. I would ask the court to refer to the notes section of the postmortem report, which reads Extreme myosis, pupil constriction was observed in the victim. Da. Clearly, being a yoko with no knowledge of forensic science, I have no idea, so please do tell me. Presumably, the fact that this condition of the victim was noted in the postmortem report means that it's an unusual symptom of death. Well, under normal circumstances, the pupils dilate when someone dies. If there's extreme constriction instead, that's most un it's certainly unusual, yes. What are you doing, Yoko Detective? In the newspaper article, just the following information about the stolen poison. Onset of symptoms occurs in minutes, ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. What? If the defendant, upon seeing the victim stabbed in the back, ha happened to notice that the pupils of Miss Brett's eyes had constricted severely, Yes, as a medical research assistant, she would have suspected poison immediately, without doubt. <laughs> Prosecutor Aochi, I think you'll agree. This is very compelling evidence. You, you, Yoko student, Yoko professor! I don't know what you have against countryside people, but countryside people are pretty chill, okay? We pretty chill people. No. Yuji Mikotoba. Yes, Your Excellency. I believe you're best placed here to confirm or deny the veracity of the count defense counsel's argument. You'll tell the court the truth about the details reported in this newspaper, please. It pains me to admit it. But I'm afraid I don't know. You don't know? The toxin was kept under lock and key in my laboratory, certainly, but I was unaware of any depth. No, Your Excellency. Without returning to the laboratory to investigate myself, I cannot say. Ha! What's the bumbling academic? Unaware of the depth. Whoops. Whatever. I take full responsibility for the incompetence of my supervision. Whoops. Water. A pitiful situation for a university professor. You should have more control over your students rather than allowing them off on killing sprees. That's, that's totally unfounded. None of this is Professor Megatoba's fault. It's all, it's all my fault. Ray. Man, Bobby-san, you sound accused. Your outburst like this will not be tolerated. But it was me. I was the one who noticed that the poison we were developing had been stolen that day. What? So you knew. I, I've been placed in charge of overseeing the project. It was the day that the professor and Soseki-san were interviewed together for their newspaper. That's when I noticed that some of the poison was missing. Just a tiny amount it was. Why didn't you let me know immediately? I... I was scared. The whole project was supposed to be confidential, but some of the toxins some have been taken. 
So I decided I'd try to get it back before anyone else found out. Because I had a very good idea who the thief was, but why did you do this all alone? The thief was the freaking murderer! Like, you shouldn't have done this all by yourself, right? As of course, it was a dainty English woman. Mr. Zell Brett? That's so why I decided to join the little group of people going to the seaside. Inside the beach hut, I confronted Miss Brett. But she just sat on a stool at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me as if she knew she was untouchable. Wow. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well now, whatever do you mean? And then, she suddenly got to her feet before falling to her knees in front of me and then collapsing on the floor. That's when I saw the knife in her back. I couldn't understand what had just happened. And then, a moment later, I was seized with fear. The pupils of her eyes had just shrunk into tiny pinpoints. I don't believe it. In other words, you realized that the victim was suffering the effects of stolen poison. My mind started racing. I hadn't seen anything past Miss Brett's lips was so I've been with her. Which left only one possible way for the poison to have entered her body. On the blade of the knife in her back. And I trained a thought was what spurred you to withdraw the blade. Yes, if that amounted that it entered her bloodstream was small enough, she might still have a chance. That's what I hoped. Really, I... I'm so sorry for staying silent this time. Your attempt to hide the truth of what happened is not something you have be overlooked. However, I duly noted the courage with which you confessed in the end. Thank, thank you, Your Excellency. It's very perceptible, but I do think the balance has shifted a little here in this courtroom now. Your Excellency, do not be deceived! The victim just collapsed before your eyes, you say? Well, my bomb is down, that's his case. Perhaps you can explain how Miss Brett came to be stabbed. Well, um... Yeah, the answer because it's simple truth is that you stabbed the victim motivated by revenge! But you have no conclusive evidence to prove that assertion, do you? Oh, I have evidence. And it is very conclusive evidence. What's the prosecution counsel up to? It was brief, but he hesitated for a moment there. I'm almost sure of it. You produced the information. Evidence at once, Prosecutor Aochi. Have some praises due, young Yoko student. What? At evidence? I would imagine there would be no need for me to submit this evidence. What? Well, you brought this on yourself. <gasps> what the... Could... A more damning shot exists. The cruelty in the air the beach is almost palpable, but isn't she pulling out the knife? Wait, why is Ray? Huh? Why is Ray wearing, wearing that kind of swimsuit? This evidence, more than any other, reveals the true extent of Aki's murderous nature. For it shows the precise moment that Menbami san punched her photographer into the victim's back. No, that's not true. No. I I don't believe it. Ah. What what really happened then? Order, order, order. Castle for the defense. Was it you who was responsible for the show screen that just burst my courtroom? Has his voice is yet to break? Does Yokos are still mine is so too much? What do you have against countryside people? Jeez. I'll show you who's slow to mature. Careful now, Susano's starting to show her face here. It is often said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and here we have ample proof. The court will accept this extremely cogent photograph of Prince evidence. Oh boy. Oh boy, I... I don't know what to say. It's such a stark image, I genuinely lost her words. Wait a minute, I, I don't understand. How did you- I mean, who took that photograph? Ray. Ray. The freaking the the, 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 the the journalist behind Soseki-san? Oh. That's an absurd thing to say, it's crucially important. Whoever took this photograph print was a witness to Miss Brett's death. The court must be allowed to hear this person's testimony. Ah! I'll upload the defenses to ban. The prosecution revealed the identity of the person responsible for taking this photograph at once. 
Well, I'm afraid I can't do that. Pardon? By express post yesterday? But there was nothing to indicate the sender's name or address. The providence the provenance of the print is unknown. Goodness. I already understand that counsel. That in full knowledge of the fact this photograph has the murkiest of origins. You never does believe it fit for submission as evidence to the Supreme Court. When you first produced that print before, I noticed uh whoops. Do you hesitate for a brief moment? Because you knew it wasn't completely reliable evidence, didn't you? Science, the Yoko student blabbering professor? What matters is the plain truth this prince so eloquently expresses. But the defenders be admitted to pulling the blade from the wound. Clearly, this is the moment that the knife was punished to the victim's back, but the moment is strong? Don't waste this course time with your ramblings. Indeed, without knowledge of who produced this print, we have no means of verifying the claim. Well, you have no- You don't have any grounds to claim that she stabbed it. Well, if you can't even, like, freaking bring up evidence that she pulled out the knife. If the deepest is unable to shed any further light on the matter, I believe the conclusion is clear. Oh no! Susato, this is your time for you to fight. If what you establish so far is true, then there can be no doubt. This photograph shows the moment that Ray withdrew the knife blade from the victim. Yes, we just need to prove that somehow. If I can't determine who took this photograph, then the trial is going to come to an end. There must be a clue somewhere. There must be some way of working out who took it. Well, Council? Your Excellency, the burning question is, who took that photograph? And the truth is... I think I know! The freaking journalists from... Behind Soseki-san, right? This isn't about whether I can or can't come up with the answer now. I simply have to. The identity of the person who took this dramatic photograph of print is, I assure you, something the deepest can and will reveal. What? No, you can't possibly. But I see so fully clear that you can't. Please do enlighten us. Unfortunately, unable to present a name. However, I am able to present evidence. The deepest is piece of evidence that reveals important details about the photographer's identity. What? Very well then, Council. Present your proof to the court. Which piece of evidence do you claim for real something about the identity of the mysterious photographer? Okay. I am guessing... The person who took this particular picture... The dude behind Soseki-san... Did the picture. What is that? The newspaper again? Raucous England returnees tell all. It's not the headline that's relevant here, Excellency's photograph. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that there are some white lines on the right hand side. Ah, yes, indeed. That already caught my eye as it happens. Ha! Huh, what of it? A shadow of some kind, presumably, from the branches of a tree or the like. There are no trees growing inside my laboratory at the university, I can assure you. Now, if you look closely at this photograph... Good gracious! Yes, exactly the same pattern of lines is present on this photograph too. Well, well, that, that tells us nothing! But, ha! Yes, this is a shadow of some kind, definitely from branches of a tree! There wouldn't be any trees growing inside a hut at the beach council. Yeah. What's quite remarkable about it is that the two patterns are all absolutely identical. How could such a distorting similarity have transpired? The curious matching pattern that appears on both photographic prints is the result of... Um, not the- I'm pretty sure camera technique does not put that. A camera defect, perhaps? Maybe it's like the camera's broken? Obviously, it must be due to the problem with the camera used to take the photographs. With, with the photographic device? Yes, we can probably say that the camera's lens must be scratched. And that the scratched lens causes unwanted lines to appear on every print taken with the device. In short, the two photographs under consideration here 
We're taking it with the same camera. Da da but but there must be hundreds of such camera devices here in the capital. It would be utterly impossible to identify the owner of this particular Attention. one. I think you're forgetting Professor Aoji, a prosecutor Aoji, that one of the photographs featured in the newspaper article. And then they would say the photographer's name in the article, would they not? The author of the article is the mystery witness to his crime. What? What? May What? I I see you're called a raucous England attorney. What are you yelling about? You already testified. It's many memo, I tell you, many memo. Me, ni, me, <gasps> Um, so Seki san what was that? Did you say many memo? Okay, guys. Um, I think that'll be it for part one of the Great Ace Attorney Two. Um. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Um, next time, I'll just continue this trial. Alright, bye-bye!